exactly God wants his house to be full. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. Now, if we're going to fill up God's house, we've got to reserve four seats in the house. We've got to reserve four seats in the house. And tonight, I want to kind of bring out to you the four seats that God wants us to reserve if his house is going to be filled. Are you ready for this tonight? The first seat God wants us to reserve, number one, is a seat for worshipers. Are there any worshipers here at Victor Ivy Center? Is there anybody here tonight that knows how to worship God? Is there anyone here tonight that knows how to lift up their hands without being ashamed and give God glory for their life? Can I hear an amen? Is there anyone here tonight that knows how to get a hold of God's presence within their life? You see, if we're going to, be able, if we're going to see God's house filled, we need to reserve a seat for worshipers. I want you to know that God's favorite house is full of worshipers. Jesus said that my house shall be called a house of prayer. Can I hear an amen? And what tells me that, that, that we are building God's every house is when God's house is full of his presence. When God's house is full of people who know how to get a hold of him. When God's house is full of people that are not ashamed to lift their hands and give God glory. When God's house is full of people that know how to have church without limit. Come on, somebody. When God's house is full of people that are not ashamed to get radical in his presence. They're not ashamed to shout. They're not ashamed to get excited. They're not ashamed to lift up their hands. Come on, somebody. They're not ashamed to go into the wee hours worshiping God. You see, in the Old Testament, God commanded Israel to build an ark. Your pastor talked about it earlier, but upon that ark, he commanded them to, call, to build something called the mercy seat. Say that with me. Say mercy seat. Mercy. And the mercy seat was literally just two angels with their wings stretched out towards one another, facing one another. And in the Old Testament, Exodus 25, 22, he said, And there I will meet you, and I will speak with you above the mercy seat. From between the two cherubims, which are the ark of the testimony. You see, I want you to know something. That God has called the church to be a mercy seat, not a judgment seat. Are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? Aren't you glad that when you walk through the doors of Victor Outreach, nobody judged you? Yeah. I, listen, I look out into this congregation, and I know some of you, when you came to church, you did not have it all together. In fact, I look out here tonight, and I see some of you, and you still ain't got it all together. Come on, somebody. But I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to worship God with you. I'm here to invite the presence of God with you. Because I know I'm not the one that can change you. It's the power of God that can change you. It's the presence of God that can change you. If you have habits in your life, the presence of God will break those habits in your life. If you have issues in your life, the presence of God will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. Maybe your marriage is going through it. Guess what? When the anointing of God touches you, your marriage comes back together. If you're sick in body, when the power of God begins to fall in the house, God can heal the liver. God can heal kidneys. God can heal blood. Come on, Victory Outreach. Get excited if you know how to worship God up in here. How do you know a church is truly experiencing the presence of God? How do you know that there are truly worshipers in the house of God? How do you know? I'll tell you how you know. Because people walk in one way, but they walk out another. You may have walked in depressed, but you're going to walk out with the victory. You may have walked in defeated, but you're going to walk out knowing that God's got the best ahead of you. You may have walked in sick, but you're going to walk out healed. You may have walked in with a habit, you're going to walk out set free by the power of God. How do you know the presence of God is in a church? When people walk in one way, but they walk out another. You might have walked in a gang member, you're going to walk out a man of God. You might have walked in a, come on somebody, you might have walked in a drug addict, you're going to walk out a woman of God. I don't know what you're going through today, but when the presence of God touches your life, you cannot be the same. You cannot stay in the same situation. You cannot keep the same attitude. Is there anybody here that wants to worship God in spirit and in truth? Come on and praise Him right now like you know God is real. Come on and praise Him right now like you know God is real. You know how you know a church really is experiencing the presence of God as people are changing. Look at two people tonight and tell them you're changing. Even if they're not changing. Come on, somebody. Look at them by faith and say, you're changing. Come on, look, don't look at me. I know, I know I'm doing all right. Look at somebody around you and say, you're changing. You're changing. The presence of God is changing you. The Holy Spirit is changing. I wish somebody would get excited here. This is good preaching tonight. Oh, the Holy Spirit is changing you. The Word of God is changing you. Church is changing you. You're not, you're, you're even cuter in the presence of God. Come on, somebody. You're even happier in the presence of God. You're even more joyful in the presence of God. I'm grateful that when I got into the presence of the Holy Ghost, I could not stay the man that I was. I had to be a new creation in Christ Jesus. I'm going to be grateful. Tonight. Hallelujah. Let me give you one more other thing. When the presence of God hits 
the building, dreams and visions are going to happen. You know what? I thank God that you have visionary pastors. I thank God that you have pastors that are dreamers. We need more dreamers in the house of God. We need more visionaries in the house of God. I'm tired of religious people. I'm tired of people that lost their dream. I'm tired of people that are beat up in the house of God. You know what we need? We need, we need people that are going to dream for God again. We need people that are going to recapture their vision for God again. And the only way to recapture your vision, the only way to recapture your dream is when the presence of God begins to fill your life. When you begin to pray and you begin to seek God and you begin to worship God in the seat of a worshiper, my friend, you're going to experience fresh dreams. You're going to experience fresh vision. You're going to experience revival in your spirit. How many are ready to get a hold of God's presence in their life? Hallelujah! So say worshipers. The second seat we're going to build to fill God's house is not only do we need to reserve a seat for worshipers, but secondly, man, we, we need to reserve a seat for workers. How many thank God for the workers? Oh, come on, somebody. Those workers, they're so tired. Oh, they're so tired. They're so tired. They feel like giving up all the time. But how many are grateful that they're faithful to their posts? Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I thank God for the workers, man. I thank God for the people. Yes, yes, there's people that worship. And I thank God for the worshipers. And I thank God for the prayer wars because they're real holy. But oh, I thank God for the workers. Even though sometimes they're angry. Come on, somebody. Even though sometimes they're in the flesh. Come on, somebody. Even though sometimes they complain. Come on, somebody. Even though sometimes they feel like giving up. Come on, somebody. I thank God for the workers because they're ushering and they're working in the park. And they're cleaning up the church house. I thank God for the workers because they're preparing for the service. I thank God for the workers because they're making the coffee and they're cooking the enchiladas. Come on, somebody. Oh, I thank God for the workers. I can, we can't have church without workers. We can't have a good church service without workers. People can't be changed in the presence of God without workers. Oh, I thank God for the workers because they're working with, with the children's ministry. Come on, mom and dad. They're working with your bratty kids. Come on, somebody. And if you don't want them, what makes you think those workers want them? You need to thank God. You need to thank God. You need to thank God for the workers and the people. Oh, that pay a price for the men. We need workers. We need workers. You're not excited? <laughs> because you want to spend your whole day in the seat of a worshiper. Oh, bless me, God. Oh, speak to me, God. Oh, give me a vision. Oh, God, do something for me. You're a taker. You're a taker, man. That's all you are. You're just a taker. You're just sucking the workers dry. You're just sucking the pastor dry. You're just sucking the leaders dry. Listen, God wants you to get up out of your worshiping seat and know what it feels like to sit in the